We're continuing our series on the parables of Jesus, and we've looked at a few over these past few weeks. I was going to say they're not in any particular order, but uh, as I feel that's right, we can move from one to another, and then there'll be one more next week, and then we'll move on to a series on, on Lent. But we're looking at this parable today, the parable of the sower, and that's found in Matthew's Gospel. It's also in the other Gospels as well. <coughs> that same day, Jesus left the house and went out beside Lake Galilee, where he sat down to teach. Such large crowds gathered around him that he had to go and sit in a boat while the people stood on the shore. Then he taught them many things by using stories, he said. A farmer went out to scatter seed in a field. When the farmer was scattering the seed, some of it fell along the road and was eaten by birds. Other seeds fell on thin, rocky ground and quickly started growing because the soil wasn't very deep. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and dried up because they did not have enough roots. Some other seeds fell where thorn bushes grew up and choked the plants. But a few seeds did fall on good ground where the plants produced a hundred or sixty times as much as was scattered. Jesus then said, if you have ears, pay attention. And we'll pay particular attention to that phrase a bit later. Jesus' disciples came to him and asked, why do you use nothing but stories when you speak to the people? Jesus answered, I've explained the secrets about the kingdom of heaven to you, but not to others. Everyone who has something will be given more, but people who don't have anything will lose even what little they have. I use stories when I speak to them because when they look, they cannot see, and when they listen, they cannot hear or understand. So God promised came true, just as the prophet Isaiah had said, these people will listen and listen, but never understand. They will look and look, but never see. All of them have stubborn minds. Their ears are stopped up and their eyes are covered. They cannot see or hear or understand. If they could, they would turn to me and I would, Lord, would heal them. But God has blessed you because your eyes can see and your ears can hear. Many prophets and good people were eager to see what you see and to hear what you hear. But I tell you that they did not see or hear. Now listen to the meaning of the story about the farmer. The seeds that fell along the road are the people who hear the message about the kingdom but don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches the message from their hearts. The seeds that fell on rocky ground are the people who gladly hear the message and accept it right away. But they don't have deep roots and they don't last very long. As soon as life gets hard or the message gets them in trouble, they give up. The seeds that fell among the thorn bushes are also people who hear the message, but they start worrying about the needs of this life and are fooled by the desire to get rich. So the message gets choked out and they never produce anything. The seeds that fell on good ground are the people who hear and understand the message. They produce as much as a hundred or sixty or thirty times what was planted. 
So, Jesus, as we know, loves telling stories. And he had been telling stories in and around where he was living at the time, at Capernaum, quite near Lake Galilee. But now begins a series where Matthew records he moves out and teaches around Lake Galilee. And as he moves into that area, away from Capernaum, the crowds have heard about this man who teaches and tells stories and seems to be speaking the words of God. And so great crowds start to follow him. And at one situation, there were so many people trying to hear him that the only way Jesus could teach and get them all to listen was to get into a fishing boat and just go a little way out from the shore. And others could stand on the, or sit on the banked, banks around the shore of Galilee and they could hear him. So he tells this story about the sower, the farmer. And we've mentioned several ways of trying to understand these stories, but there is one method. A parable is a metaphor or story connected with the affairs of daily life. It's used to, as an illustration of moral and spiritual truths on the assumption that what applies in one sphere is also relevant in others. So when we come to this parable, what do you hear? What did you hear when you hear, heard the story? If you hadn't heard it many times in churches before, you may think that it's about a farmer that wastes lots of his seed and wastes his time planting because most of the seed seems to fall in places where it's not going to grow very well. I'm sure most of those listening to Jesus as he tells that story would think that, first of all. Because they would understand not many people in Israel at that time live very far from farming land. Villages were small, cities were small. People would wander out of them and would see the farmers planting seed. And they all planted it in the same way, not individually, but go out there with a bag around their waist and broadcast the seed, as it was called, scatter the seed, hoping that the birds wouldn't come down and eat it before they got the plough out and ploughed the field again, turning the earth over the seed. But of course, this story has got a deeper meaning. And the meaning is that God or Jesus is the sower and again came teaching and was scattering his word, the seed, around seeking for people to understand and want to belong to the kingdom that he was talking about and therefore the kingdom of heaven would see a great harvest. And they would all know the scenarios that as you broadcast this seed far and wide some of it went on the paths, you know, those bits of field that you walk around where everybody walks and the ground gets so hard that no seed would take root in it. And it would be easy for the birds to come down and snatch it all away. Because seed needs to be planted at least a couple of inches into the soil, we all know that, I'm sure, before it will take root because seed not only needs to grow up it needs to grow down doesn't it it needs to grow into the earth to get its nutrients and 
and water. And of course, Israel, if you've ever been to Israel, you will notice immediately that it's a very rocky soil. Yes, they plant with tractors and all that in modern days, but you can still see there's lots of stones in the ground and they get ploughed up over the years. But you can't take the stones away or filter them out on the ground, otherwise the soil will become too thin and blow away. So it was one of those things the farmers knew they had to put up with. There's a few stones and a few rocky pieces of ground that the ploughs would go through. And of course then that was another place where the seed wouldn't grow on the rock because it had got no depth to it. It was an unfriendly terrain for farming. But people farmed, even though the soil was a bit rocky, lots of stones, and had thin layers in places over rock. Some seed did take root, but of course through the summer it could never last. And we all know if we plant seeds in our own garden, the greatest danger to the seeds is the weeds that seem to grow up from nowhere and always seem to be stronger than the seeds, don't they? Well, Jesus talks about these things in this story. The seed, some of it fills on good soil, takes plant. And the miracle of growth and harvest takes place. But as he begins this story and tells it, first of all, before he explains it, he comes up with this word. He who has ears, let him hear. What's this all about? Jesus says this in various places in his ministry. And it's a quote from Isaiah. And everybody would know that's what Jesus was quoted. It was from the prophet Isaiah. And he was warning, especially his disciples, that no matter how powerfully the word of God is preached and taught, there would always be somebody who never understood it. Is that unusual? Then, no. Is it unusual today? No. And that's why Jesus taught in stories. Because he knew that the true word of God that was spoken and had been written about often fell on dead ears. Not because people didn't understand the words were being said, but their hearts were closed to hearing what God was saying. And that's very true, isn't it? Many of us have experienced that. I can remember as a young child, like many of my people of my generation, went along to Sunday school every week. And that wasn't too bad. You had a nice time at Sunday school and then eventually you had to go to church and that was oh so boring. <laughs> and most of the people there, I can remember the day, got their watches out and seeing how long the minister spoke for. <laughs> and if he went on longer than 10 minutes, then it, whatever he said was terrible regardless. <laughs> And I was part of that crowd. Why? Because my heart basically wasn't open to the words from the Holy Spirit. And that's what Jesus is saying here. To understand the teachings of God, you have to have a hope and heart to his spirit. Because it's the spirit that translates it. And the spirit that makes your heart warm to hear more. So that's what that little phrase, 
is all about. We need spiritual ears, really. Well, uh, our ears are in spiritual mode. We understand the depth of what God is trying to say from us, from all sorts of things, from the beauty of the earth to the words spoken by the preacher, by the words of songs that we sing, take on a new meaning because the Spirit is engaging with our hearts to rejoice at the praise and worship that comes through our songs today. This is why Jesus said to them, if you have ears to ear, let people hear, but most people won't until the Spirit enables them. <coughs> John Piper, you've heard me quote him several times, I like reading him in his daily blogs at the moment. This is what he says about this parable and about this phrase. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. That means it's not enough to have ears on the side of your head. Everybody has those. But there is another kind of ear that only some people have, and those can hear. He who hears, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. There is a spiritual ear, or a heart ear. There is an ear that hears in the preaching of the word more than mere words. There is a beauty and a truth and a power that these ears hear, compelling and transforming and preserving. That's the kind of hearing Jesus is calling for. And we can all have those spiritual ears. We just need to have a heart that's open to listening to what God is saying to us. Not just through the words of scripture or the words of the preacher, but through all sorts of things, because God speaks to us in many ways. Mature disciples of Jesus grow spiritual ears and eyes and speak with a spiritual tongue. And we have that maturity in Christ to see what's going on in the world, in nature, in fellowships, in friendships, in families, in words spoken by people, discerning whether they're good or bad. This is what part of this parable is about, is being open to words from God who's speaking to us in many ways. Let's uh, have a resume when I get a drink. Talks about that as well. Many people say we, this should be called the parable of the soils because that's what it's more about. Jesus is the seed sower we are the soil and we've got some bearing on what type of soil we are. We can be a good soil where God's word grows in us and we produce spiritual fruit. There are some people where the seed is sown and their ground is full of thorns and thistles. And as much as we would try to grow, we're always being stunted because we haven't made ourselves into a receptive soil to grow the word of God. Others sometimes grow quickly and then fall away where the temptations of the world 
seem to catch on and become more important. You see, it's the hardness of the human heart. It's like the hardness of the soil. It's like the soil that's full of rocks or full of thorns and bushes. The source of the problem is the human hardness of our spirit, the shallowness of our faith, the self-indulgence with putting ourselves first before others. So we ask the question, which type of soil are you? <coughs> Let's go back to that story about why Jesus used parables. He said, I have explained the secrets about the kingdom of heaven to you, but not to others. Everyone who has something will be given more, but some people who don't have anything will lose even what little they have. I use stories when I speak to them because they look, they cannot see, and when they listen, they cannot hear or understand. So God's promises came true just as the prophet Isaiah had said. These people will listen but never understand. They will look and look but never see. All of them have stubborn minds. Their ears are stopped up and their eyes are covered. They cannot see or hear or understand. If they could, they would turn to me and I would heal them. This is one of the most quoted passages in the New Testament. And Jesus teaches this to his disciples to know that as we seek to serve God in this world, it's not going to be easy. We're going to be full of obstacles and problems and difficulties. They are always going to be here. Life is never going to be one joyous journey. We are always going to come up against problems. But our job is still to refine the soils of our souls so that God's word can continually refresh us with his word and love that makes life a lot better. Come across Donald English again, very often. Come across him last week and this week. How strange. For all those Methodists amongst us. The central clue in this parable is found in the various types of receptibility in the ground. Neither the sower nor the seed, and certainly not the weather, are determinative. Everything depends on the state of the ground. Seeds are incredible things when you think about it. Oh, they are small and yet they can turn into so much. All different shapes and sizes etc. But they're all basically a lot smaller than the produce they grow. Don't they? Yeah. So small sometimes you've got a job to identify one single one of them. But of course, small seeds can turn and grow into large seeds. And Jesus spoke about that as well. Jesus also talks about the mustard seed, the smallest of seeds that grow into such giant trees. This is the truth of God's word. God's word is powerful enough to change the world, to continually change the world, and we must remember that. I like also what Jesus is recording to say in Mark, 
is the, where he says, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seeds on the ground night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by himself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. It reminds us that Jesus is spreading and planting his word all over the place. And it's the job of those who love Christ and already belong in his kingdom to make sure that that word continues to be spread throughout this world. The parable of the growing seed, unique to Mark, but it's got some truth. It's not anything that we have got to do to ensure that God's word survives and is kept on planting except being open and preparing our ground. We have the responsibility to ourselves to keep our relationship with God good, which equals this soil that we are. When our relationship with God is true, and available to hear, then God can do his work, no matter how strong or weak our faith is, how fit or strong we are. We just need to ensure that we are right with God and God's word will flow throughout our land. Now I'd just finish with N.T. Wright. Like a farmer starting a new agricultural year, God would sow his field with crops and that would bring in a harvest. Isaiah, Jeremiah and others had spoken in this way. Sea time and harvest, part of God's created order, have long been a picture of how God the creator would act to redeem his people from their sins, rescue them from exile and deliver them from oppression. So as we hear scripture, it's important that we not only hear it, but read it ourselves. It's important that we seek to be more like Jesus every day. And that will enable the sower to continually to sow his seeds into this world of ours. Next week, we're on the parable of the labours in the vineyard.